Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I'm Tony. And I'm Tally. And we are the Lazy Book Lovers. Boop, boop. I've just realised a plane is going on overhead, oh, and I'm yeah. very sorry, guys. <laughs> that was the worst moment to start. We do not have a professional setup. Deal with it. <laughs> Deal with it. Part of the brand. <laughs> and also, it's warm today for February, and we needed the window open. The other day, I had the heating on. And now suddenly it's like sweating outside. The planet is broken. Anyway, to do our proper intro, <laughs> this is a podcast for book lovers who procrastinate about reading and have never ending to be read piles. Today's episode is our next our reading update. Um, Books we have read. It's for roughly a month ish of time. It's not very precise because we're recording in advance, so it makes things wonky. And we're only picking out ones we want to talk about. If you want to be more involved in the books we're reading, join our Facebook group, which is Lazy Book Lovers Podcast. Yep. It is set up as a private group. We can't change that. We will approve anyone. <laughs> we're chill. <laughs> Just go and chat to us about books. I know there. it means you can't see what we talk about in there, which is like, I get that one, why that would put people off. Yeah. As like an anxiety thing of being like, not being able to see what else is going on. Yeah, you could just like join and then stealthily leave if, if yeah, you're Yeah, we won't okay be offended. It's fine. Um, There's not much going on at the moment because it's just us. <laughs> it's just us chatting to each other. Yeah, no, it turns out Facebook will not let you unprivate a group you started as private mm. because of the members in it, even though I went and removed all of our members to see if that would then let me change it. And Facebook was still like, no, no we need you just to, have to set up a new group. We need to protect your members' privacy. And I'm like, what members? But I'm the. The admin is the only member. Like, what? And I don't want us to lose the name. After so we can't you, delete and restart. After you told me about that, I remembered seeing a TikTok about it where someone said you can make a, an, a, public, a public group, group private. private, but you can't ever go back. Which I get. I get why they're doing it. Yeah. But why can't the system tell when there's no fucking members in the group? <laughs> Anyway, because it's meta. But please come join us there so we can chat to you more about books as we're reading yeah. them. And like every single read, because obviously we're just picking standouts for these things now. Because our reading updates were getting feckin' long, guys. So Yeah, and also I've discovered that some books I just don't have much to say about. Yeah, I was like, so it's good. Why force myself? <laughs> yeah. Um, especially to keep these a bit higher energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um so do you want to go first or shall I? I will start. Okay. Because I have a tangential thing to go along with it. Okay, so, cool. I'm excited. Yeah, we're, we're, we've got a tangent already pre-ready. Pre-loaded. Um, so I read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which is the first in the Emily Wilde trilogy. We're going to go series because I'm not 100% I've sure. I've suddenly started seeing loads of TikToks about this recently. I don't know why. It's because it's so fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, because the second book is came out in Feb. Ah, uh, okay. Beginning of Feb. So this year I'm trying to force myself to read like my rainy day books. Yeah. Which for those that have maybe not heard the term, it's like the books that you know you're gonna or you're convinced you're gonna love. So you somehow just keep putting them off. Yeah. Um, or you wanna give it like proper mental space. Yeah. So you're and like, oh wait, I'm, I need to wait till nothing stressful's happening to yeah. read this. Till and I'm then, like on holiday and it's like and then me things on never holiday, get. not stressed. So I'm going to hold on to it for 30 years or... Yeah, you on holiday with two small children. That would yeah. only work if we ever get to do our holiday abroad that we've talked about for like three and years. me, a millennial, being able to afford a holiday <laughs> when I have dependents. Fucking hell. You've got rent and children. You're never having a holiday ever. Yeah, what in the Conservative government <laughs> am I thinking? But anyway. Not even a caravan holiday. Those are now freaking expensive. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> um... So, I read this because I'm going to try... It's on my bingo board for 2024 to read more of my rainy day books. And this was one of them. And I loved it. She did a squee face. <laughs> she was like, it us. was. It was as good as I hoped it was. It was cosy. It was fun. It was fairies. It was a kind of high stakes as well. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Um, let me just read this little bit because I love it. A curmudgingly, love that, <laughs> a professor journeys to a small town in the far north to study fairy folklore and discovers dark fae magic, uh, friendship and love in this heartwarming and enchanting fantasy. I don't know if I said the author. The author's called uh, Heather Fawcett. 
So, yeah, basically we follow Emily Wilde. She is an expert in fairies or what... Um, so, in this world, yeah, fairies are known to be real. Okay. It's kind of... I don't think it... I can't remember the date it's set in, but it's like... I would say kind of Victorian-esque times. Okay. I think it's, it's set up as like diary entries. So, I'm quite sure it says when it starts what year but i can't remember off the top of my head but fairies are known to be real and the study of fairies is called like um, dracology or something like that okay so she is a professor she uh is a person who is known to be an expert in fairy okay. and the fae the fae and she is, as it says, writing an encyclopedia. The main character, Emily, is extremely autistic coded. <laughs> Love it. She finds a lot of comfort in the Fae because they follow uh, very easy guidelines in how they act. Their social structures are very clear whereas humans do not give her that yeah and humans have a lot of emotional stuff that she can't quite get right no matter how hard she tries yeah so yeah she goes to this place which is kind of set in i would say like norway or something like okay. that and um, because the fay there the professors in london don't know much about so she's gone there and that's the last chapter she needs for her very very involved encyclopedia to go and meet the uh the fey folk of this town yeah um she has a academic rival called wendell <laughs> wendell bambleby that's a great name yeah and uh he is like effortlessly charming he is able to get everyone around his finger and she is of the opinion he is probably a fae oh. but he hides it well but she has no she she doesn't care enough to talk to anyone about it or to mention her yeah. under her theory because it doesn't matter yeah so while she's there he turns up and he's got his uh because he's he's like a rock star in the world of fey folk. Yeah. In terms of being an expert in it, not that anyone knows he is. Oh, yeah, spoiler. He is, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and he turns up with his, like, he's got um, some students that always come along and help yeah. him. She thinks he, like, has other people do his work and he just takes... Oh, okay. You know that kind of vibe? Yeah. yeah. Well, they he... got an undergrad to kind of Yeah, do and it he gets away them. with it because he's charming. Yeah. Like, that's the vibe. Yeah, so he decides to turn up and she's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, Emily, my dear, I listened to this on audio as well, which was great. Yeah. He's like, well, Emily, my dear, I'm here to help you, obviously. And he just kind of like pushes his way in and she's like, <laughs> oh, like, I don't want you here. This is my encyclopedia. And he's like, well... I'm going to be presenting at this big uh, symposium or whatever. And symposium. that's it, thank yeah. you. And if you let me help with your encyclopedia, you can be like a joint speaker with me. Ooh. And she's like, okay, well, I kind of have to fucking let you stay now, don't yeah. I? And like, it's just really hard when I mean, like, she learns to get along with the townsfolk and makes friends friends his students disappear quite quickly and then it's just the two of them and they become quite close and she finds out that her theories were correct i wouldn't say that's a spoiler because i think it's quite she's at the beginning she's like he's definitely a fake. yeah and then she ends up getting caught up in so much shit that i never saw coming it was so so good okay. i thought it was winding up and I was like, this is so cute. It's all been yeah. so, like, happy and heartfelt and yummy, yummy, yummy. And then I looked and I was like, there's still a lot of hours left on this yeah. book. And then it went, fucking shit, shit down. went down. Yeah. yeah. And she ended up in, like, the fey world and she her life was in danger. And I was, it was, yeah, I just okay. loved so it. So one of those ones that deserves the hype then? I would say so. I know I've seen a lot of people that dislike it a lot and... 
their critiques yeah fair enough i loved it for mm. me it was absolutely five star i would say it's probably more about character development than the plot but the plot is fantastic okay. in my opinion and then you prefer character driven stories though i do yeah like i can have aimless plots as long as the characters are yeah. gripping me and a little tangent okay to go along with this so in the story there's a changeling child yeah. which in case you don't know anyone listening or in case you don't know i assume you know the story of course it. so there used to be a belief i guess maybe some cultures still believe it that if your baby or child started acting weird it was likely that they'd been kidnapped away and replaced with a fey child yeah known as a changeling it's kind of like a cuckoo type thing yeah okay so i saw a tiktok that had a very interesting theory obviously tiktok um it was someone's theory on tiktok i'm not saying this is not academic or absolute but someone who does who does content around neurodivergency was sharing these lists of that used to be given out yeah no i have seen this of like how to find out how to tell if your child is a changeling and they were all basically symptoms of a neurodivergent child specifically an autistic child it also isn't really hard to spot until you're about two-ish because that's when if there is any developmental delays or any social well unless it's severe they won't even discuss it until your child's three years old in the uk anyway but it won't show up until you're about two like obviously yeah yeah i mean i've seen i've seen tiktoks where people have done like things that my baby did that i now know were symptoms yeah, and I like mean, how it manifests when they are like baby babies yeah. as well and they're like now I know well it's the same with my son like I look back and I'm like there's so many things that were obviously ADHD and yeah. I mentioned it as early as I could but they would not touch it they went till they went to school wasn't it? yeah and yeah. then when I went to school they were like oh you should have started this by now and I'm like look the health visitors won't touch it <laughs> there's like this big issue in the UK of yeah this, but yeah I think this I think this is an issue in, at least in Western. Yeah, but places. I mean, like specifically in the UK, because that's only where I have my experience. Yeah. And like, um, there's a there's about a year and a half gap when no one will touch it. Yeah. Between schooling and like health visitors. Anyway, yeah. So things like stimming with hands is a changeling. Yeah. Um, symptom. Uh, not maintaining eye contact. Bad sleep schedule. <laughs> I can't remember what else was there, but they were like the three main ones you, I remember. You do hear people saying, oh, my child was completely normal until they were like two or three. Is that, why are they though? <laughs> but yeah, so these are like, these are normal. real. I said I don't like that term. Sorry, I'm just yeah, quoting. Yeah. I don't believe that term. I want to be clear. But like, yeah, so these real things that people in our history said were evidence of changeling children now we would say yeah. is evidence of neurodivergency and i think that's crazy yeah. because not only does that possibly 100 percent uh, prove that this isn't a newfangled thing no. like people like to say but that also is quite scary because changeling children were not treated no. well and they would have been physically emotionally abused i mm. think it was quite similar to like witch trials and yeah. stuff um and that's really disgusting yeah but also um in the history of the world i don't think any culture really has a good history with treating anyone that has mental illness or a disability so <laughs> yeah, some indigenous cultures yeah. definitely deal with it better but westernized ones especially Christian ones. Mm. <laughs> Not to use broad strokes, but <laughs> like even you know, right down to like having three meals a day is because of the church. Oh, the church can just fuck off. That was something they introduced it's around a prayer yeah. a daily prayer cycle. So much shit that everything so, that is wrong with capitalism even right is down to religious. To being told we have to eat three meals a day. That is a Christian yeah. thing. And then people who like to graze... We like, rant too much, yeah. <laughs> people who like to graze, like me, We're are eating wrong. No, I'm slovenly. not. Slovenly. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I don't believe that lazy is a real thing. I no. actually discussed this with someone. They were like, mm. "Yes, it is." La la la, and I'm like, "No, you can fuck off with your laziness." <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone's. If someone's being lazy, something else is going on. Yeah, and lazy. La- lazy implies that we have to be productive all the time and productive in a certain way. Mm. You can't be like personally productive. You have to be productive in a way that helps, like capitalism basically yeah i was this is such a tangent but like i've actually got a blog coming out on this topic that i wrote Mm. recently do you know how many adults i know that don't have any hobbies yeah they just and i understand when you get busy with life and especially if you've got kids or people you care for it can be really hard to find time for something that's not productive but productive in quote quote yeah but there's so many adults don't have any hobbies like when you ask them what they do for fun, they they don't do anything. For, they go to work or they come home. They watch Netflix usually. Yeah, mm. but it's like you can even like if that's your if your say if your hobby is you really do like TV shows. Yeah, yeah. I'm not th- saying that's but I think a lot of people just kind of zone out and watch it in the evenings. Yeah, they come home, and they make dinner, they switch the telly on, they clean up from dinner, go for a shower, go to bed. Yeah, I mean, this is like the argument that people we get all the time on like book communities where someone will come along and be like, but you don't, how do you actually have time to read this many books? Or do, do, do. And it's like, well, when, when you're kind of just zoning out doing that, I made the choice to read. Yeah. It's like, we've all got. But I mean, like, uh, so it's just people don't have any hobbies, yeah. or if they do have hobbies, they only do them if they're like good at them. I was trying to tell a friend recently, I was like, do some shit drawings. Oh, yeah, this is... I do mean, a crap painting. Do some shit crocheting. Do something. You don't have to be good at something to enjoy it. I was like, you know, like, I... I there's someone... I, just, I do put this in the blog. There's someone who got made redundant this year and was very violently reminded that they are cog in the machine. Mm. I have never felt more like i mean nothing <laughs> to mm. these and this was you know quite a small corporate that i worked for it was bought out by a very big corporate who then what it that i'm not i'm not allowed to talk about that actually um <laughs> but basically they chose to make the stuff the stuff redundant from the, the the place they bought out they made me sign the nda guys so i can't tell you anything else <laughs> but that whole process was so brutal and so impersonal Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that I was like I, and a lot a lot of people's identities are tied up in work, especially if they have nothing outside of work. Yeah, so this is what I'm saying. You need something to be passionate about that's not your work because at these days, any moment work can go. And I think this was like the big struggle that a lot of people had during lockdown. Yeah, because without well, without, without work, the purpose they had of nothing. going to work, they were like, what? like, look, I'm not. I'm not glamorising lockdown. No. I'm not saying it was great. I thrived because I was like, I don't have to waste my time going to work. I can just spend time with my kids and enjoy reading or drawing or playing on the trampoline or whatever. Well, like, like, to use a non-lockdown example, the time when I... After I was made redundant before I got a new job, so I had, like, two months off. I have worked since I was, like, 15, Mm. I have never had two months off where I wasn't in school or travelling or I I have never ever in 15 years had that much time off. I will never have that much time off. That makes me sad. That's what I mean. So to use that as an example, for me it was like discovering <laughs> what life could be like. As in I could eat as much as I wanted or like not having to take stuff into an office or have a timed lunch break i didn't realize how much i hate that and i understand why i have to have time like lunch break blah, blah, blah. no no you don't know do you yeah i but, because you know, as long as you're getting your your work done yeah that's what i mean i was like it was just like the ability i'm just to, very anti-capitalist as you know yeah the ability <laughs> to like eat when i wanted to eat what I wanted to because I could cook it because I was at home mm. so eat better to not have to have the mental energy of pre-preparing all this food get as much sleep as I wanted just have time to 
do shit. Yeah. Like, oh, I can just go to the post office tomorrow because I have time. Yeah. And no one's messaging being like, you're supposed to be available on Teams, where are you? <laughs> teams. Because <laughs> my entire job is to just watch how long you're unavailable on Teams for. Yeah, or like, I don't know, go swimming at 1pm because the pool is not then full of children and adults. Which, I, get, I mean, I realise these are really first world problems, which is apparently not a PC phrase to say anymore, but anyway. But it was just, it was for me, it was that glimpse into like, because when I, pandemic was completely different for me because I just left a really awful job mm. and I was kind of in almost recovery and I didn't like, it, so my two months off was like pandemic plus being able to go places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Especially as I could drive. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to go and wander around B&M for an hour because for, I can. I'm not, I'm, I mean, probably spend money, but I didn't have to. <laughs> Do you know, but it's, yeah, so, mm. I just, yeah, I'm not. Anyway. Um, I can't remember why that sounded so. Fairies. Fairies. It was a great book. If you like the sound of that, get it, it was it was fun, it was cute. <laughs> the audio book was really good. Okay, shall I do my next one? Yes. <laughs> we said this is going to be a short episode. Well, oops. I started talking about capitalism, that was my bad. Oh, we always, oh, actually, we haven't done a rant in ages. Yes, yeah, that was my bad. Just, um, it was fun. Okay, so I finally read A Soul to Keep, the first book in the Duskwalker Brides series. I've not so read it yet. You guys will, I if you are to. on the internet sphere of book stuff, you will have seen this. It's the cover with Skeleton Man, like with the with a deer skeleton, I think it is, and the girl in a white dress stood in front of him. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll read, let me read like the summary and then I will... Oh, the summary is very long. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to read that. I'm going to summarise it for you. I know it's going to be a shit version. <laughs> um, so our main character is Rhea. She survives. So in this world, demons exist. They roam about and all the humans live in like little villages with high walls that are all defended. Rhea's family gets killed in a demon attack and for some reason Rhea survives. Um, and the village decides that it means she's a harbinger of death ofs because she survived a demon attack and they're like why would the demons leave her she's obviously a demon herself that makes sense. so then she gets basically raised in complete isolation on the edges of this village and treated like shit her whole life and then we've got our dusk walker who's like he's not he's not quite a demon but he's not quite human they're like a weird mixy thing mm. and he has a deal with certain s- villages that he offers them a protection circle in exchange for one human every 10 years. Okay. Now, he says they must be pure. They've taken that to mean virgin brides. Of course. He meant... How Christian. Free of disease. <laughs> Which is like a funny moment later on where her virginity becomes comes into question for reasons. And he's like, why would I need virgins? And she's like, you said pure. And he was like, disease! Bloody humans! Like... <laughs> you can't see my face but rage um, <laughs> internal rage yeah. so they and he says willing willing victims only the fact no no sorry you got, you've got, no. are you revving back up or I am I really am <laughs> the fact that virginity is even associated with like pure or clean in any way is so so disgusting. Yeah. Get out. Yeah, disapprove. Go find the front door and fucking throw yourself out. It's, it's, so, it's a social construct. It means nothing. Yeah. If we've got any younger listeners, it's it's not. It, you know, Virgi- virginity isn't a real thing. No. So Sorry. Anyway. Proceed. <laughs> so they're supposed to be willing sacrifices. They're okay. supposed to give themselves up to like to protect the villagers. Like it's supposed to be like oh, I'll step up and do it. It's like a noble thing. A but, volunteer as tribute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the village this time are like, hey, we want you, the Harbinger, Harbinger of Death, out. You're finally old enough to sacrifice to the Duskwalker. So your your options are <laughs> dungeon slash death or Duskwalker. They're like, so you're willing, in a sense. As in, you have very little options. Yeah. They still present him some alternatives that are like other sacrifices that are just who want to be there. 
but for him so basically he is his part demon part reacts to the smell of fear which is what makes him go feral and like eat them mm. um so he ends up choosing raya just because she's not afraid she's just pissed off I like her. When she gets sacrificed, she's just fucking angry. She's like, I'm not even scared of the weird skull fucker. Like, I'm just... I'm furious. Furious. And I'm going to... Ex- Female rage. I'm going to escape him the second I can. Oh, I like her. And then she's like, okay, I have to follow him for a while because, like, if I... If he leaves me here... So, basically, outside these walled cities, you are demon food. So, she's like, I have to stay with him to, like, survive. Like, they end up getting junk- jumped by a group of demon hunters that know that the Duskwalker comes every ten years, so they've set a trap for him. And he's like, they do this every year, and every year, every ten years I kill them. Like, <laughs> it's and, not a surprise, but guys. because he goes into, a, like, a blood rage, he ends up killing his sacrifices because of that, and he doesn't want to. Mm. He basically, it's really... It, What's he want his sacrifices for? Would that be a spoiler? He was short a friend. Oh, no. So, the Duskwalkers... I hate that. <laughs> yeah, so the Duskwalkers are kind of these entities that... They get... So they have different animal parts and bits of humanity, and it's basically to do with what they've eaten. Hmm. So they start out with, like, no humanity, and the more humans they eat, the more human they become. So they get to a point where they don't want to eat people anymore. And they also start to understand the concept of loneliness. Once they get a certain amount of humanity, they start to get lonely. So he made this deal back in... This has been going on hundreds of years. He made this deal because he was trying to find a friend. (laughs) And there's this sort of... I hate it. I know, it's so sad. This is what I mean. Because my partner, when I was reading this, he was like, you monster smart girlies. I was like, no, you don't get it. (laughs) You do not understand. Um, So there's an entity... So they they all live in the... The demons live in the Vale, which is like this stretch of land that's like demon land. Mm. And then they venture out to eat people. There's an entity in the Vale called the um, Owl Witch, the Owl Witch basically told him he needs to find someone who's willing to tie themselves to him to give him their soul. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, hey, I'm going to start getting humans to get <laughs> to get a bride, it is. But then he ends up getting betrayed by someone he thought would be the one who stayed with him for five years. Mm. He, ends up, he, built, he built her a house. He builds all sorts of stuff. He grows a garden for her to feed her. And he's got a little sexy purple penis. Yeah, he does. We'll get to the and penis. And she didn't even care. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the penis. <laughs> I'm like, I know that much. I've got artwork. Yeah, yeah. With the penis. <laughs> um, so he give, he's basically given up on finding like a bride, and he ends up just I just want a friend. So then that's why he starts taking male sacrifices as well as female. He's like, I just want a, I just I want just a friend. Want a buddy, mate. I just want a buddy. Yeah. And he keeps. They either escape and die, or they do something that makes sets off his like his instincts and ends up making him kill them. No. Like, they do something that makes him angry, or they run, and that anything that it basically starts his prey drive. So he's all lonely. And he doesn't want to kill them, and then every time he kills one, he's really sad. Oh, and then he has to wait, like, nine years, years for the yeah. next one. Oh, oh. Um, most of them don't survive more than, like, a day with him. And then, like, Raya's just, like, unafraid of him, and he's like, maybe this is the one? And then the moment where is they... Is it um, dual POV? Yeah. Um, so the moment where... They get ambushed by these hunters. She, like, takes that as her moment to run off because they're all, like, fighting him. So she's like, okay, go. I'm going to escape him now. And then he obviously kills all the hunters and then hunts her down and he's in, like, blood-filled rage. And she's like, I remember him saying to me, like, he reacts to the scent of fear and me running. So she just stops dead still and just stares him down. Mm. And it basically stops the hunt in its tracks. And he's like, oh, maybe she's the one. Like, oh, maybe. And then the whole time she's just trying, like, thinking about how she wants to escape. Yeah. And then she ends up having no choice but go to go into the veil with him and go to his little special house. And he's, like, got all these, like, protections on the house to keep her safe. Oh. But she's just like, I've been caged my whole life and now I'm caged don't again. Need more, yeah. Yeah. But he's like, but you might die. Oh. And then, like, she does one point run away. And then he, like, gets really badly hurt trying to save her. And then she realises, she's like, oh, okay, he's right. And then she, like, she, like, helps him heal. And she and he's like you. You saved me. And she because the, the house. Oh, sad the, face. Yeah, the house is like really protected, and then the grounds outside it. He has to like he has to renew the spell to keep those that safe. And obviously, while he's poorly, he can't renew that spell. Mm. So she drags him in the house to keep him safe. Oh, 
And he's just like, oh, she saved me. And, like, she makes him something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, she, like, makes him something just because, like, she's bored. And she's like, do you want me to make you, like, a bracelet? And then he's, like, so proud of it. And <gasps> that it's, is so cute. It's just, oh, he's, I'm, <laughs> bear in mind, okay, this is, he's got a skull face. He's got a wolf body. He's got fins on his arms. <laughs> He's got protruding, like, ribs. He's, like, a monster. Sounds sexy to me. (laughs) (laughs) His penis is, like, corkscrew purple, purple, and it's got tentacles, and it also can, like, disappear inside him. When I heard there was tentacles, I was, like, sold. (laughs) I was like, okay. This is another rainy day book for me, by the way. I'm waiting for the perfect moment for this book. But I thought it was just going to be pure smart. No, there's like this whole backstory to the Duskwalkers and what a mystery of like their I need, origin. I need this now then. <laughs> and like the origin of them and you start to find out towards the end, you find out the origin of the Duskwalkers and where they came from mm. and all this. And then, so then we get introduced to a second Duskwalker who isn't as old as Orpheus R1 in this book. Yeah. And he doesn't have a name yet because no one ever named him. Mm. And he just wants to be named. And he has like, ask Rhea, will you name me? And she's like... I can't name you. I'm so sorry. Like you need, you know, needs to be names are very someone, special. Yeah. And, he, and then I start, I've started reading the second one mm. and he's like, why it doesn't want anyone want to give me a special name? Am I not special? And I'm like, oh. that's special. I'm not special. Um, so I did not expect to find this book so romantic. Like the Duskwalker, the the Orpheus is like so attentive of her and just wants to make her happy, and he's always just like, "What can I get you?" And like, if she stands on a chair, a little like golden retriever. Yeah, like she stands on a chair to get something from a cupboard. He's like, "No, you are a fragile human. If you fall off that, you could hit your head and die. I don't want you to die. Get down." <laughs> so he'll like come up and pick her up. It's like, like me talking no. to my child. Yeah, like you will fall and die. He's so worried all the time, and like she likes to sit outside in the sun. So he carves her a wooden bench and the table to sit in the sun. If he wanted to, he, he would. would. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, I, it's, I did not expect to find this book as romantic as I did. I was like, it's a really sweet story. And then, yeah, there is quite a lot of plot with it because we all know I like plot with my smart. Mm. It's an established fact now. <laughs> And they go to like there's like a demon city inside the veil, and they go there, mm. and it's like funny in places because he's like he's fairly got a lot of humanity, but he still doesn't get certain things. Mm-hmm. Like he's really fascinated about tickling, and he's just like you laugh, but you say it hurts, and she's like, it's like torture, but it makes you laugh. Yeah, like it's involuntary. Yeah, and then like he sort of like runs up a claw up her neck, and she giggles then too, and he's like. But humans aren't ticklish there. And this is basically, they so conveniently, <laughs> to hide her scent from the demons in the veil, he has to wash her in a special oil twice a day in a bath. Fair enough. And that's, <laughs> that's where Rhea, who has obviously lived her life isolated, it's a lot of touch for her, and she's like, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting turned on by this. She's like, and then there's a whole, like, she goes through a whole crisis where Rhea's like, am I getting turned on by a man with a skull face? She's like, is that okay? Maybe it's fine. Yes, it's okay, Raya. <laughs> she's like, it's, honestly, there's a whole bit where she's having like a crisis about it. And she's like, am I, is there something wrong with me? Maybe I really am a harbinger of death. Like, maybe I am an omen. Like, because I'm finding a monster attractive. Well, because she didn't know that he is attractive. Old skull face with his hairy body. <laughs> Yeah. It's, 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 oh, I can't wait to read this. Read it. I've started the second one, which is like the story of Nameless. Did you see what I put up in my story the the dedication at the front? Uh, I don't think so. These all have really good dedications. I don't know if I took a picture or if I just did it straight to my story. Let me have a look. Yeah, I d- right. So this is the, the foreword to the second book, guys. Um, to all the depressed monster fuckers out there, this book is for you. Sometimes we just need a big bad monster to come along and remind us that life is worth living. It helps when they are scary enough to chase away our nightmares and naughty enough to tease us with their cock. This book is for all my fellow plus size babes. <laughs> I did read that, yeah. <laughs> and that was like, okay, I'm, I'm reading the second so one. so cool. I'm in her Discord. And she's you? just so chill. I love her. <sighs> yeah, I'm definitely. I'm I'm gonna read I'm gonna read all of them. Yeah. 
They're 500 pages each. Yeah, they're, they're books. They're a commitment. They? Uh, but I've decided to, I'm in it now. This is happening. And I might now be a Monster Smart convert. This is my first Monster Smart romance. Is this the first one? Unless we count the media mishaps. Yes. We do. Then it's sort of my second. Have you still not read Morning Glory Milking Farm? No. Um, that's disappointing. Well, that's that's like a next step up in Monster Have Smart. Have you read The Dragon's Bride? No. Mm, that's also disappointing. Yeah, well, I just, you know, this is my foot in the door to Monster Smart. Let me probably get. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what episode we talked about Morning Glory Milking Farm. Oh, a few of them. But. And I struggled hated. with that one a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Because of the use of the word milking, it's just too often, and I think you can get what it implies without us having to tell you much more. <laughs> oh. uh, so, can recommend. Good. Very good read. Yes, your turn. <laughs> right. Completely different change of pace. This happens a lot. Oh, actually, mm, I could do one that's in no way similar, but let's go with this one first. Okay. <laughs> I read... Uh, Wolf Song, which is the first in the Green Creek series by TJ Klune. Oh, I keep meaning to read I this. I have mentioned a few times about TJ Klune. Please look him up and make your own decision on whether he is an author you want to support or not. I have the Green Creek series, mm-hmm. and I've been meaning to read it, obviously. So I finally did the first one. Yep. Okay, how do I talk about this series? There's so much about it I hate. (laughs) But I enjoyed it so much I couldn't not read it. It gives me, like, Twilight vibes. Right, okay. If that helps explain my hatred yet love of it. There's, like... Like when I'm reading those dark romances where I'm like, this is all trash, but also I'm here for the trash. It's not trash... Okay, so it's about a... It's a fantasy romance, and it's about a family of werewolves, or, like, a werewolf pack. And all that that entails, we have, like, mates, etc., etc., which are things I'm not always a fan of. Um, So, this isn't really... No, it's not a spoiler. Okay, so we've got our main character, Ox, and he has a he has like no one in his life really mm-hmm. like he is at the beginning of the book he is fifth uh, i think he's younger but like the main part of the story starts he is it's his 16th birthday right his dad left when he was nine and was basically said to him no one will love you or something like that <laughs> so he's always had this issue that no one cares for him yeah um he lives with just his mum he has no friends at school he's bullied a lot by school I was going to say friends, but they're not friends. He's very lonely. Yeah. Then one day this family moves into the abandoned house next to theirs. Yeah. Like they live like in a middle of nowhere kind of thing. And in no way a spoiler, it turns out they're the werewolf family. Yeah. Um, (laughs) He comes home from school one day and uh, there's a small child on the road that's like the joint road to each of their houses. And he comes over and he starts sniffing him and he's like, what do you smell like? You smell so interesting. And he climbs up him and climbs on his Mm. back and he's sniffing him and he's like, you smell like candy canes and blah, blah, blah. blah." Um, And he is 10 years old, this boy. And Ox is 16. Okay. Okay. And they become basically the bestest friends ever yeah and it turns out that something horrible happened to this little boy who is called joe um he's the youngest child so there's two older brothers Mm. and then the mum and the dad something horrific happened to joe and you find out about that later in the book but ox finds out that joe hasn't spoken for a year and the first time he speaks is when he smells ox and goes to talk to ox. Okay. And he takes ox home and he's like, look, this is our neighbour and he smells so nice. Look at him, look at him. And so the family take ox in and they're like, we love you. Yeah. And he doesn't really understand why till he finds out that Joe hadn't spoken for a year prior to this because of some something that happened to him. Mm. So, yeah, at some point, ox finds out that they are werewolves, obviously. Is this a spoiler? Okay, I don't think it's a spoiler. Okay. And I think... I do think it's something that you should know going into it. Okay. Okay. When Ox is like... When... 
wait, so how old? There's six years between them. Six years between them. When Joe is 17 and Ox is 24? Yeah. They start to have... Yeah. Okay. And I don't like it. They start to have a romantic relationship. And that's where the mated part comes in. And I don't like it. It reminds me of... (laughs) Jacob. (laughs) Jacob and Renesmee. And I don't like it. But apart from that, I really like the book. <laughs> I could have waited till he was like at least 18. I don't know. Like, why 17? Why was there an age difference? Why did he have to write an age difference? That is yeah. my main issue. There's no need Because you for could the age have difference. Big Brother r- r- vibes with a two year age gap or a three. Like, anything a bit more. They could have just fancied each other, both yeah. been of a, an appropriate age and fancied each other from the beginning. Yeah. He didn't need to be a Big Brother. Yeah. Until he was of age. It... Yeah, okay. That was icky to me. The rest of the book, I loved it. Oh, there was one other thing I didn't like. The rest of the book, though, I did love. Yeah. I'm going to continue with the series. Okay. It's a big book, but it was Mm. weirdly unputdownable. Like, I just wanted to know what was happening. It's one of those ones that's really readable. Yes. That's how I felt about This Is Sold To Keep. Like, it was really readable. Like, really easy reading. And I was looking up, like, some critiques of it. And obviously a lot of people had issues with that age. And I was like, well, yeah, because I also had Mm. issues with that. But the way it's written is very strange. And I think, even though this was a very early series that is now being re-released, I think a lot of people coming into this series having read House of Cerulean Sea and stuff like that. Yeah. And this is written very differently to, like, his newer books. Yeah. Um, his style of writing has clearly changed between them. So this is very much like it literally starts when Ox is like nine and it goes to when Ox is like 28 or something and it jumps. Yeah. And like there'll be some parts where we have like a long thing of maybe like a year of his life and then it'll be like three years later. And some people really didn't like how disjointed that was. Yeah. So I would say it's very much like a study of ox yeah a very again character mm. i would say um but i really enjoyed it if you it has all of like it hits all of the tropes you expect from shifter books yeah and you won't enjoy it if you don't enjoy those tropes yeah like there's some things i don't like uh, age difference i hate but i expect it in paranormal stuff unfortunately yeah. um and i don't really like mated stuff a lot of the time but i can't complain when there's mated stuff in a shifter book yeah so yeah you know it, it i'm going to continue with the series it's enjoyable i did not want to put it down okay um and so the second book they each book follows a different character from the pack as well which yeah. i think is quite cool nice. there's also witches and stuff in it there's everything in it oh nice yeah new vampires well, yes. Okay. So, I would say it's like halfway between Twilight and um, the Sookie Stackhouse okay. novels, which is like True Blood, you might know it as. I would say it's like a good middle ground between those two. It's... What? Mm, I think some people will mistakenly call it YA. I would say not. Mm, new adult. Okay. I think is acceptable. It's also queer. Uh, queer relationship, obviously, the two. Mm. And most... I mean, it's very well established that the the walls do not follow human yeah. sexuality boxes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I enjoyed Interesting. it. It. I think... I'll tell you what. I've just made an, a connection. I think the reason the age difference in the relationship bothered me so much whereas it bothered me more than in something like twilight even though there's not twilight is like hundreds of years i think the reason it bothered me is because they are a gay couple and the only reason i say that is because gay men are always accused of grooming Mm. So it's playing into a and harmful I, I stereotype. Think that's, I think that might be what... And I've just made that connection. Yeah. I think that's why I didn't like it. So it's playing into a stereotype that's harmful. Because that is yeah. like, you know, when people want to ban gay books, they're like, because it grooms children. Like, people associate 
queerness with grooming. Yeah. And I feel like maybe that doesn't help that they that they yeah. were a gay couple and it feels like grooming, even though it's not. Well, especially to go from like, oh, I'm a big brother vibe to relationship. Yeah. That vibe. is like literally grooming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Okay. Yeah. It it was really, really fun. I it was enjoyable, to be honest. Okay. So I'm gonna group some of these just for time. So I read the second book in Mead and Mishaps series. Mm-hmm. That time I got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf. Yeet. Uh, and I also read book three, which is that time I got drunk and saved a human. And then I also read the two novellas of the series. So I read Mistletoe. So you've done all of it now, I, d- I read Mistletoe and I read, there's one called A Bump in Boo Hail. Mm. Uh, 60 pages, by the way, if oh, you want to yeah. short read. The, that one is set between two and three. So potentially spoilers if you haven't read two yet. Um, For my birthday, I got given a copy of... So I only have a physical copy of the first one. I've been reading the I've rest got a of... copy of the Yeeted one, which is the second one. Yeah, yeah. they're all on um, Kindle Unlimited, yeah. yeah. So... I want to I want to own them all, though, because they look so, so good. Pretty. Oh, I, I know, but obviously I'm not going to get... The new covers won't match the original cover I've got of the first one. Because I've got the one... Do you remember I bought it when we were at the signing? Yeah. I've got that cover. No, that is the covers now. I thought the new ones were those cartoon ones. The cartoon ones were the original ones. Oh, okay. That's the traditionally published covers. Oh. And the, the cartoon ones were the indie covers. Oh, so they're on um, Kindle, they're still the cartoon covers. Yeah. Which is why I thought yeah, it was the other still, way around. Yeah, still the indie covers on. Oh. So if you buy any, they will match your one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know whether to buy it. Like, will I reread them? But they're really pretty and I've really enjoyed yeah, them. So I'm a right. bit like... <laughs> uh, so... Book two follows a character we meet in book one, so I can't talk about it too much without spoilers. Um, And it's also uh, Cinnamon, our main character for book one. It's her best friend, Brie. Mm -hmm. So it's Brie, and then the guy is a character we meet through Cinnamon's adventures. Um, It's the werewolf dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Whose name is escaping me? No, not Fallon's the dragon. Anyway, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Um... Yeah, so, like, all the shit that goes down with Cinnamon in the first book, they free the demons, Mm. which is, like, the whole quest of the first book, so I don't believe that's a spoiler. And so then some demons arrive back when Cinnamon and Fallon come back. They bring some other demons with them, including this werewolf guy. This werewolf guy sees Brie, and he's like, you, you're my fated mate. And then... At the same time, a creep from the village who's been trying to hit on Brie has spiked her drink with a love potion. Oh. And she, the werewolf, like, they, I don't know if, I can't remember. Someone smells it and is like, that's a love potion. She's like, how fucking dare you? So she goes to, like, throw the drink over Mm-mm. the creep. He ducks. It hits the werewolf guy. Oh, no. Um, and then he, oh, no. And then she doesn't believe that she's his fated mate. She's like, it's just the love potion, dude. Yeah. But he's like, because you got hit by that love he's potion. He's like, I, I'm not, I can tell the difference. It's fated mateness. And then there's like the love potion. They're, t- they're making me two, think two different thoughts. And she's like, I don't believe you, but okay. Yeah. And she's like, has her own farm. She's happy on her own. She's got her, she likes to read Monster Smart as well. The uh, main, the female characters in these books are always like, they're well established. You know, they can look after themselves. Yeah. They've got things going the on. The women of Boo have got interest, industry. Like, they don't need the men. They're fully fleshed characters. Yeah. yeah. And they're always like plus size women of colour as well. Yeah, they're always like queens. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he he's like, I need to move in your house. And she's like, no, it's my house. No, thank you. Um, and then at the same time as this is happening, there's a creature hunting women in the village that are single. And so, like, the, the werewolf guy is pure, like, golden retriever energy. So he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to go register as married down at the town hall. And she's like, how did you do that without me there to sign? He was like, I threatened the guy. <laughs> she's like, but now you're safe from being kidnapped. And she's like, but you've you've married us, and he's like, "Well, obvs, you're <laughs> my wife. You're safe now. You're my, you know, you you're welcome. You are wife." <laughs> and he like carves a nameplate that's his surname, puts it outside, and she's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Um, and then she's also she's like <laughs> also so she's been reading werewolf smut books for years, so she's also like Loki though. <laughs> yeah. But 
also. And then <laughs> the love potion part of it is like driving into her insanity, and he's like, "I'm actually gonna go insane unless we fuck." And she's like, "Oh well, I guess I'll have to fuck the handsome werewolf." What, what a shame! A shame. <laughs> and then as they get closer, she's like, "Oh, I kind of like him." And if this is all because of a love potion, I'll be uh, really, really that's sad. Very disappointing. Yeah. And then obviously the whole there's a the the main plot is about the women being kidnapped and what happens with that. And then book three is another character we meet from book one. He goes off to find his fated mate. Uh, he finds her at the first place he stops. That's quite convenient. Yeah. Um, that time I got drunk and saved a human. Yeah, I like that this one was saved a human. And so like... this is basically, and I'm not going to say the name of the character because it's. I feel like that is spoilers, but the fated mate that he meets is has been trapped in a tower by a dragon for five years. Um, and then she gets rescued. So she likes. She sees this other dragon come. She's like, "I'm gonna drug him, and then I'm gonna convince him to save me." But then it turns out he's a massive lightweight, and she drugs him too much, and he's oh, like, no. "The fruit is talking to him," <laughs> and she, he, she's just like, "Oh shit, I fucked up." I fucked up. Um, and he, in his drug stupor, is like, "You're my mate. I'm gonna save you," and she's like, "Huh." And then she he transports her to his castle in the middle of the demon lands, and she's like, "I've been, I, I've just escaped one dragon castle, and now I'm with another this, dragon." This is like, this is not exactly what I was after. And then <laughs> she's just like, "Well," and now he's calling me wife. I don't I don't want to be your wife. I want to go adventuring. I want to go back to my family. I've been missing for five years, and he's like, "No wife. Here's a tiara. Yeah, you stay here. Now. Here's your gift." And then he just keeps giving her like riches for because they go to his horde his dragon horde and he's just like keeps putting jewelry on her <laughs> and she's like i'm not your wife but i'm keeping the tiara i'll keep the jewelry i'll know. keep, I'll the, keep the goods <laughs> and then she's like i will agree to see this thing through if you take me to see unicorns because i didn't know unicorns were real and he's like, take. I, I approve of this. <laughs> so she's like, take me to the unicorns. And he's like, yes, anything to make you happy, love. Another like, golden retriever. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, he's like really grumpy. Oh. But it's just like. Grumpy sunshine. Yeah. And we're kind of nice. She's quite. Sunshiny as well. Sassy. Oh. Just cool characters. Yeah. So he's quite grumpy, but he's just like, whatever, my darling, like, <laughs> please. <laughs> He's like, I've want, I've waited seven hundred years for my mate. I've found you. I'm gonna do whatever I can to make you happy. I will take you to the unicorns, and then they have to stop on the way, uh, and they stop in this town, and they figure they find out in this town that like a uh, demon's been kidnapped to be like gladiators, um, whereas the before they like saved the demons, these demons were like being were didn't really, uh, anyway, the demons before the magic, they they, <sighs> words read it to find out. <laughs> Basically, demons are thought to be like these thoughtless monsters, mm. and it turns out they were under a spell that was making them that way. So this is obviously they were being used in this gladiator thing before they had conscious thought. Uh -huh, yeah. And then they are now being forcibly fight to fight each other, and they're being drugged to fight each other instead. And fan and then um her drag the dragon guy gets mixed up in all of that, and she's like, "Well, I'm gonna save you then." So then she's like the knight in shining armor. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh and in the process of this, she realizes she's like, ah, oh, I kind of might love him. I kind of do like him, damn it. And I'm just like refusing to because he's a dragon and I already got kidnapped by one dragon. She's like, oh. wow. And this whole time she won't tell him her name or where she was kidnapped from. Mm. And it has a connection to our characters in the first two books. Oh. So the whole time, that's the only thing I didn't like about it, was the whole time they keep nearly revealing the connection and then she does not until the fucking end. When she's like, okay, I do love you. Also, um, this. <laughs> it's a really good series. I really loved it. It's so much think? fun. Oh, the only one I've read of this is Mistlefoe. So tell me what you thought. Mistlefoe, I love the sword. It's so fun. Also, so the sword. I'm convinced Mistlefoe was only written to introduce the sword character because she's in the next two or three books. Ah, that makes sense. So Alexis the sword. Because she has such a big yeah. heart. So she's in the next two, two books. Oh, as, brilliant. As a side character. So when she's like shopping and spending the dragon's money when they visit this town, the sword is with her, and the sword like insists on having its chair pulled out at dinner for it, like she's a lady, I love and it's the so sword. funny. 
Oh, fine. I need to bump this series. You need. Up as you need well. to read them. They're so short. Yeah, they're like an average of two hundred pages each. Year. They're so much fun. Mm. I love these books. You've been doing a lot of Kindle reading, haven't you? By the sounds. Yeah, of. not on me, purpose. Just because these were on KU and they're yeah. on my list. And the Souls one. Me and me and digital reading are not getting along currently. I fall asleep. And so I've got a physical book that I started, Ray Bearer. Yeah. And I was enjoying it, but for some reason I'm not reading it. <laughs> yeah. I just, I've been doing audio and physical, but like digital books, I just, I, I sit down mm. with them and I fall asleep. It's because there's lot like it's just looking at a screen and I'm just asleep. Well, actually, weirdly, the way they're helping me at the moment... Because I can't talk about real life stuff because it involves work things and whatever. But real life has been really stressful. Mm. I'm starting a new job and that's enough, I think, for you to know if you've been paying attention. And sleep is obviously, as usual, when I'm stressed, sleep becomes an issue. Mm. So for this, with a Kindle, I can turn all the lights down and I can read it on low light setting. Yeah. Whereas if I'm reading a book, I have to have lights on. Yeah. So it's helping me fall asleep. Yeah, because I'm falling asleep with the Kindle See, in my the hand problem. a it's lot. It's helping me away. It's helping me too much. Yeah, it? yeah. It, my partner has been coming in and putting me to bed so many times oh, yeah. where I've fallen asleep holding my book. Yeah, and he's had to take it and put my phone on charge for me and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like oh, I a couple times. So when I go to my partner's in London, mm. sometimes he'll game for a bit, and I'll sit on the bed reading or do blog stuff or whatever. I'm like, I'll do whatever I feel like doing basically and we ignore each other for a few hours it's beautiful yeah um, I remember being able to do that before kids came along <laughs> we, me and my partner still ignore each other but it's just I've always got a kid there yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and Aki and so I'll be on the bed and I'll get more and more slumped yeah and he's like you're gonna fall asleep and I'm like no I'm just getting cozy <laughs> yeah we used to always do that like kids play games and I would uh read my book mm. Honestly, ga- gamers and readers meant perfect. Yeah, perfect dating relationship. Yeah, or or and then eventually, in <laughs> in his room, he set up an extra TV so I could do my games. <laughs> so I have a TV so I could. But yeah, yeah, because you know that whole. Sometimes he'd be like, "Oh, I'm only gonna play one more game," and I'm like, "You're fine. Keep playing." <laughs> I'm good over here. <laughs> I'm gonna do a few more chapters. It's all good here. Yeah, you're good. I'm not annoyed. <laughs> oh yeah it's okay but, I need to bomb this series up is what I'm hearing see also this like because the, the Soul to Keep and then this this series were like the happy easy going easy reading cute romances yeah so that's just what I needed while I've been quite stressed <laughs> I'm trying to prioritise my physical books and both of these series I have one physically so that mm. can be my excuse to do it yeah I Last month, so I'm trying to track how many books I have incoming and outgoing and track, like, I want to try and yeah. read my physical books because I have, I, I can't remember, I edited it all up and I have far too many I've not read. <laughs> and last month I picked out 48 books that I'm going to get rid of, which is quite a lot, I think. What, read and then get rid of or just get rid of? No, get rid of. I was like, Ooh. do you know what? Most of them I haven't even read, but I've just thought I've had them so long. Yeah, I've kind of lost interest in them now, so I'm just like, gonna get you them bought a new them because they were in like in a moment, and then yeah, the moment passed, and you're well, like, actually, do I want to read this? A lot of them are contemporary YA, and I've noticed I just don't gravitate to that anymore. So mm. uh, they can go to someone who will enjoy them. Right. So I'm just gonna I'm I'm just gonna talk about one more book actually. Okay. I read this for a. 24 hour readathon I took part in last weekend. Yeah. Because apparently I have time to do that. <laughs> I read three books, so apparently I, I don't fucking know how my brain works. In anyway. between <laughs> your 10,000 jobs, the children, feeding yourself, feeding them, bathing them, you somehow read three books. But I no can't. No more questions. But I can't put out one Instagram post. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So this was a buddy read for the readathon. Yeah. And it it was a horror themed readathon, so it's a horror book. And this one was called The Ha by David Sodergren. And uh this fucking book <laughs> This fucking book. Right. I'm 
even now, I loved it. Okay, just just to be clear, I loved it. It's four point five, four point seventy five. I don't know. It, yeah, it's almost five stars. But damned if I don't fucking know what was going on at any point. <laughs> right, and it was not at all what I thought it was going to be going into it. Okay. Right? Okay, I'm just going to show you the image for starters. Oh, so it's creepy. The the cover shows like an inside out almost person with one big eyeball in the middle, right? And I was like, okay, this is going to be a really interesting horror. It's a body horror. You really like body horror. I do enjoy I can't, body I can't do it. And let me read you what it's about. I didn't read what it was about before I went in because I don't generally do that. Um, Muriel has lived in a Scottish... Oh, yes, it's set in Scotland. And the Har... The Har is... It's this fog that specifically comes across in, like, the northwest of Scotland or something. It's a particular fog that they only get in one part of Scotland. Okay. Um, So, Muriel has lived in a Scottish fishing village of Witchhaven all her life. She was born there and she intends to die there. But when an overseas property developer threatens to evict the residents from their homes and raise Witchhaven to the ground in the name of progress, all seems lost until the day a mysterious fog bank creeps inland. The Ha. To some it brings redemption, to others it brings only madness and death. What macabre secrets lie within the Ha? Romantic and deranged, the Ha is a gore-soaked folk horror fairy tale. And that is correct. <laughs> so, yeah, she there's this very small fishing village. Some rich American man who may or may not be a uh, slightly Donald Trump esque um, <laughs> is buying up his he's been buying up loads of villages because he wants to knock them all down and do build a golf course there. <laughs> <laughs> and her particular village, there's like eight of them left holding out and then it goes down to like five left holding out Mm because he is offering a lot of money to knock their houses down and um her and her nearest neighbor which in this kind of area are not particularly near have both like were both born in the area and they they have no reason to leave like she her husband has recently died well like within the last couple of years her son is now married and has a child of his own he's busy he never visits like yeah and she's like what this is my home i refuse to leave and yeah. it's quite a pride thing at this point yeah. as well she's like fuck you and your stupid american golf course yeah like, duh, duh, duh. so she's just refusing to that she's like i will happily die here yeah i have nothing going for me make me like the house from up build around yeah. me yeah <laughs> and she's like you know, and she was so in love with her husband and she's still grieving that. This book is about grief. Mm. And she's grieving the loss of her husband still and da da da. And fucking hell. So there's like, <laughs> I just, there's a lot of, she is in her 80s, maybe 90s. Okay. And like, fogs are sent to attack her there's a lot of like elderly abuse and things oh, yeah thugs do you mean thugs yeah sorry i thought because you said thugs and i was like Fog? oh um i can't say the difference a sent to like attack her attack her neighbor he gets killed and it's all very graphic and because they're old it's horrible to listen to mm. as well so that's gross and then one day she goes for a walk and she finds like this jellyfish type thing that has one big fat eye on it yeah. and it feeds on blood and then it decides to help her out i'll just leave it at that okay. it's fucking crazy okay. it's really gory it's really good okay <laughs> and it's so incredibly emotional I mean, it's not one I'm ever going to read, but no. it does sound very, it's, very you. It's for a start. So much grief in it. I was just like, I cannot. But yeah, I know um, in the Buddy Read Discord, a lot of people had to stop reading because of the like elderly abuse. It was just too much, which is understandable. It's mm. not nice to read. It's not nice to read abuse of anyone, but like, I don't know. 
hearing about an old person getting beaten up is a bit gross, yeah. I think. <laughs> but I think most people can't help but picture their older relatives in yeah, that scenario. Yeah. That's definitely what I'd be thinking. Yeah. Yeah, so it's so fucked up. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try it more money offer. Okay. I said, I'll do my last one, just a quick one. I won't talk too in depth about it. So I have, I read a few, I listened to a few of these in the series f- months ago. Mm-hmm. So this was Two Necromancers, A Dragon oh. and a Vampire, the Unconventional Heroes series, book three this is. So I've, I listened to book one and two, it was like a combi book. Do you, ages did ago. you have to get this with a credit? Because yeah. I know the first was in the library. Wasn't yeah. It? Mm. So this is obviously this was with a credit. Um, this is by L. G. Estrella. The concept of this is there's a council of like rulers who are offering pardons to like villains, and one of the, a necromancer named Timmy. I've just suddenly remembered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the necromancer named Timmy is like he knows the t- statistics about the lifespan of necromancers, and he's like, I want to get out of the game. So he's like, he he decides to go for one of these pardons, and to get one, you have to like do like you have to work for the council for a certain amount of time, and they and then the books are just about like the things the council sends them on to do. And along the way, they pick pick up a pyromaniac elf. There's a bureaucrat which has come from the council to basically watch them. Gerald and poor Gerald. Gerald <laughs> really goes through it. He has an apprentice called Katie who like sews pink outfits for the zombies, Aww. and she has pink glasses. And she's really short and really angry about the fact she's so short, but she's like ten. Oh my god! Um, Stop. And, like, Timmy, because you work for a master that you apprentice under, and Timmy's master was, like, a horrific person. And so he's committed to changing the cycle for Katie. So then he does all these things to train her. And then she's like, you're horrible. And he's like, well, my master did this to me, so, like, you're fine. <laughs> well. <laughs> like, to train her shadows, he does throw her out of a tower, but he has something to catch her. Okay. But, so he swings around about. <laughs> but like he's like you were safe the, she, and she knows she's safe the whole time as well. Yeah. So, so she's she just could still be angry about it. Yeah, she's wants. just mad at him. Yeah. And like and there's a whole thing of like he's basically trying to raise her to a point where she can overthrow him. Okay. So she's always trying to attack him. She's got shadow magic. She's always trying to attack him. And he's like, oh, you're so cute. And ruffles her hair. And she's like, one day. <laughs> one of those stars. She's got ninja rats who are magical. Who protect the castle, but really only because they like Katie. Yeah, I remember this whole rap thing, yeah. Yeah, and then they've got the zombies, obviously, and they wake, they make zombie hybrids. So there's, like, the zombie lion pig, which is, like, loose in the castle at one point, and they're like, Gerald, just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> the elf starts to grow poisonous plants in the garden. As you do. And th- they are also hunting Gerald. Like, poor Gerald what? is just going through And it. he's just there to write reports. <laughs> yeah. And when he goes on their mission, so then they go on a mission to defeat this dragon in the last book, and in doing so, they get a dragon egg. So this one, they're raising Spot, the dragon. Aww. <laughs> this makes me feel like, um, you know, like the Adams family. Yeah. They're just a crazy family, just in the midst of something normal kind of thing. And then so they get like they go on a mission where they rescue an ancient vampire. So then the vampire's like, "Cool, I'm just gonna chill in the castle now." And Timmy's like, "Sure." This is so like fan family. <laughs> yeah, and then they go. Then she goes on a mission with them. And it's like a really big mission. <laughs> oh, this sounds really fun. I I have got that in my library. I need to see the first one at least. It's it's oh, it's so funny. And then like so they're like shopping, and Katie keeps asking him to like buy her but uh, him to buy her books, and he's like, I give you a stipend and use your money. She's like, Well, I'm a bit low, and he's like, Why? She's like, Well, so one of my contacts found a giant shark. Um, I thought that would make a really cool zombie and then they're both like really pleased and really excited about the giant shark and what they're going to do what kind of zombie they're going to make with the giant shark and they're both like doing evil cackles but her evil cackle is like a 10 year old evil cackle (laughs) and the elf so the elf is like the dragon's mother because when dragons first hatch they like they spew fire oh okay and then whoever survives the fire they're like oh must be mother yeah and she's because she's a pyromaniac elf she survives the fire so he's like mother Mm. obviously makes sense yeah and then she's just like at the first she just wanted a dragon to defeat her enemies with and then she kind of starts to find herself like Caring. liking taking yeah. care of the dragon oh, and no. she likes her poison garden and she sort of likes timothy oh, and, and no. katie and she's, she's getting she, feeling she's trying to be like enemy still like still be <laughs> like um, i really like my life here but also <laughs> yeah and she like gerald they she calls gerald and timothy the idiot 
they but they're both called idiot collect like both of them yeah she and she calls casey the twerp <laughs> and then gerald helps save spot so then gerald gets upgraded to paper pusher and then timothy's really annoyed he's still idiot <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love that oh my, they're such good silly fun i really wish like more of them were free so i could read them f- get through them faster they they like give me that waldo rabbit vibes yeah waldo rabbit like very terry pratchett pratchett-esque mm. fantasy humor they're really funny that sounds fun yeah just it's, just good times it's been a really fun audio i've listened to most of it while i've, so I've had like a little two-week break between jobs <laughs> and I've been listening to it whilst playing Sims. So and you've it, been living your best life. I've been having a great couple yeah. weeks. <laughs> uh, so can recommend. I'm definitely going to read more of them. Uh, they are on Kindle Unlimited. So I don't want to read, read or back. I really like the audio. You're enjoying the audio. Are they one of those ones that you get the audio for free with the Kindle Unlimited? Oh, I don't know. Because they do that with a lot of books. Oh, I need to look into that, don't I? What's it called? Uh, the series is The Unconventional Heroes by yeah, LG Estrella. Unconventional Heroes. So you would be on book... Four. F- four. Okay, let me have a look. I mean, note. there's lots of novellas as well, and they all need a credit mm, to listen to. Of because that would be too helpful. Book four. No. Yeah, you do need to spend a credit on it. That's... Mm. Well, they're Audible exclusive, so I'm not shocked, really. Oh, have you seen... This is an entire tangent. Have you seen this, what Spotify have done <gasps> fucked up? Oh, they changed their terms of service, so now Trying they're to... allowed to reproduce your work anywhere they want once yeah. you've uploaded it. Yeah. As a... Like you... They can make their own original stories based on your intellectual property. So if you put something up on their audiobook bit on spotify now they have changed their terms of service so that they can take your the right take your work your intellectual property and they can make sequels they can make they can spin-offs whatever they, they can do whatever they it, want yeah. with it um, they could probably even sell those rights to a tv sh- show i wouldn't be surprised yeah. so they they've had obviously a lot of backlash and a lot of people coming back off like it was a people saw it as a but they marketed themselves as a great alternative to audible which really fuck over the indie yeah far. and yeah and then this happened and people actually read the terms and were like no so everyone's fucking left sorry feel, i'm really sweary i everyone's feel left. really sorry for anyone who was like just signed them not reading it because that's what yeah. you do and they're like we've updated our terms of service you do just go right yeah, you're fine yeah and i feel really bad for anyone who has signed it and didn't read it so now they what are what do they do well, now they they've claimed that the wording has misrepresented it, but it's more like they've been they've been caught being dicks, so they're redoing their terms. Oh, okay. But yeah, I feel awful for indie authors because like audiobooks cost so much money, and every platform where they can put them up are trying to screw them over. Yeah. It costs thousands like, to get e- an audiobook done. Even if you like janky record it yourself <laughs> mm. there's still the time and the production energy and like you probably have to pay to get it on there and yeah i saw someone who's an indie author and she said that was, with her audiobooks she wants to do an audiobook for all of her books like for accessibility reasons yeah and if she added if she adds up all the amount she spent on her audiobooks it's the same amount she spent on her house which is crazy. No, there's, there's, there's not a lot of return so on audiobooks. No, and for even... small authors. Yeah, e- well, even, like, traditional authors. Mm. I mean, the publishers don't get much from it, I don't think. But, yeah, like, Audible really screws you over. They tell, like, 75% of it, and no, you so have if, to be it, If you are exclusive to Audible, you get... Th- 30% mm. or 20% don't quite you guys know I mean to go look it up because it's off the top of my head but I think if you're non-exclusive it is really low it's like 10% yeah it's, it's really ridiculous. low 10 or 20% yeah look it up I yeah, don't know the exact Spotify figures. was kind of heralded as a great alternative and now it turns out not so I would suggest checking out Libro FM to support mm. audiobooks if you can afford so I've subscribed yeah, I don't know how the authors get paid from that. I don't yeah. know how it works out. I mean, it's great in terms of the consumer. Because it's not... You get a lot of audio books. You get a lot. You're not, you're not restricted to one credit a month. You yeah. are as many as you want. Yeah. 
which is why I've been using it so much. Yeah. And I don't know what, I don't know how the authors get, get compensated yeah, no, though, so I can't comment Which is on why that. they don't have many new, new titles on there either. Yeah. They do on the American one, mm. but we don't, the British one, we don't get them, the English one. Anyway, yeah. Anyway. Um, so that was some of the books we've been reading recently. We said this would be short, but it has <laughs> <laughs> short. Yeah, we didn't actually talk about many books either. No. We did a lot of tangents. So thank you for hanging out. Please come join our Facebook group and tell us about the books that you've been reading, which is Lazy Book Lovers Podcast. It will show as a private one. We will accept anyone. We just can't change it back. I can't remember if we mentioned that this episode. Uh, that the was the start of this episode. episode. We haven't mentioned the buddy read this yeah, episode, though. Yeah, that's what I was about to do, yeah. So, we have a buddy read going on. Ooh. Woo! The Lazy Book Lovers book group. And we, it's going to be a two-monthly one. So, you are not too late to join in with the March slash April mm-hmm. book. I've lost the book now. Give me two seconds <laughs> and I will open. tell you what it's about. Because I opened up that unconventional heroes oh instead. yeah might be guys what was it called the the sun T- trial of the sun something <laughs> trial of the sun queen yeah yeah um so our march and april read is called trial of the sun queen by nisha j tilly this is a, currently available on kindle unlimited if you have that please come join us you don't have to have KU to join us, but I'm just saying. We do have a link. I have a link at least. I can't remember if we... No, we don't have a Lazy Book Lovers one. But I have one to get a 30-day free trial if you want to do that. It's in my beacon. Yeah, no, it's not a um, us thing. It's a you thing. Yeah. This is a... The Bachelor meets The Hunger Games. Ten women, a deadly contest. Only one can win The Sun King's Heart. And this is the first in a four book series. I think only the first two are currently out. And it says here, this addictive TikTok fantasy romance sensation is perfect for fans of Sarah J Mass, Fourth Wing, Raven Kennedy and Jennifer Armantrout. Um, it's the first book in a series with an eventual happy ever after. And the tropes included are enemies to lovers, forced proximity, trial to the death, who did this to you and fated mates. So if any of them sound good to you, please join along with us. I feel like it makes it fairly obvious why we've picked that now. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Follow us on the story graph and you can leave comments as you go along that we can read as well. Yeah, we'll do a buddy read on there. Yeah. We will link that in our card and come join us. And also you can chat with us in our Discord about it in more detail. (gasps) Oh, yeah. Yeah. (gasps) see last episode last week's episode to hear more we're gonna that. Yeah, <laughs> announce it in last week in last week's in episode week but we're recording our yeah. audio <laughs> <laughs> so yeah please come follow us wherever you want to we would love to hear from you and if not we will see you next week bye guys <laughs>